Now on to this uh, creepy pasta wiki. What kind of theory was this deal? It's it's a purgatory theory. It's basically what well, what happens to the characters if they ever died, and like um like how they like how they died. There's a lot of um they have a lot of purgatory theories for um TV shows. There's one for Ed and Nettie. There's one for the Rugrats. Yeah, dear God, I ended up seeing a like, whole lot of those, you know, lost is, episode ones, you know? Yeah, and the thing is, not only Purgatory Theaters are meant to be creepy, but they're also really sad. <laughs> it's like, oh God, it's like you never want really to think that it's something that something from a children's show would have like something this dark, but... It, and to, it, it would be written by somebody else with yeah, a good, and, sick, demented mind. But the good news is, in this My Little Pony theory, while it is sad and creepy, the ending the ending is surprisingly good. Because the ending, it's one of those endings where it actually makes you think. Uh, should I Sorry. really be thinking about life after death? I'm already well, fearing death as is. It's inevitable. Yeah. So are we ready? Well, I guess. <laughs> All right. Enough. All right. This one is My Little Pony Theory. You all have probably know about the new generation of My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. It has, for one reason or another, become an overnight sensation. Whether or not you like the show yourself, you have to admit that its success is impressive. However, it raises a question. Lauren Faust has worked on other popular shows and has been working on her own line of toys, the Galaxy Girls. How did she wind up creating the remake of some 80s toy commercial instead of working on her own ideas? It could be that she's just nostalgic about her childhood My Little Pony toys or something. But even then, what artist wouldn't rather work on their own ideas? I read this news story a few years ago. It was about six girls who all went to the same school and died on the same day. January 18th, 1999. A friend of mine from North Carolina sent me the article from a small local newspaper. I forgot about it until I was watching a few episodes of My Little Pony and realized the main characters are surprisingly similar to the girls who died. I decided to look at the article again. The paper had either gone shut down or I had re misremembered the name, so I tracked so I start. So I try to track down my old World of Warcraft buddy and asked him for the article. Turned out he happened to have the file saved to his computer, and I was right. There's a definite connection here. The first girl, named Samantha Gales, was obviously the inspiration for Fluttershy, a shy, introverted girl. But her classmates didn't know that, that she was constantly abused at her home by her mother and stepfather. Her mother conceded her at age 15 and she blamed poor Samantha for ruining her life. This made Samantha self-conscious. When her stepfather moved in, this made the neglect worsen. Her stepfather never liked having to take care of Samantha when her mother was away, so he would lock her in the basement and leave her, sometimes for a whole day. Her mother tolerated this, and, as she grew, would hit Samantha for talking out of turn. When her half-sister was born, the abuse became considerably worse. She would be starved, forced to sleep outside, and sometimes beaten outright. Because she dressed in shabby clothes and had low self-esteem, she was often picked on by the other kids at school. Her only friends were animals she would rescue, which her family would make her get rid of. She committed suicide by overdosing on helium. Valium. Va Valium, that's right. If I say Valium, 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 that's what I mean. Dear God. <clears throat> Sorry. The second named Janice Walters, was always one of the popular girls. She was rich, smart, beautiful, and seemed to live the charm life. However, her parents argued constantly and were, really, and were really only together for appearances. She was held atop to a high standard, which made her a perfectionist. She wanted to be a designer and live in Paris, but her parents wanted her to remain in Carolina and marry a proper man, one of good breeding and high income. For the most part, her parents ignored her. Her parents' only concern was appearing rich and of high social standing, but in reality, her mother married her because her father because of money, and since he had accumulated so much debt, they had been losing money. 
fast. This is what got her interested in fashion initially, since she started making her own fashionable clothes to maintain the, the, the appearance of wealth. She died in a car crash when her mother and father got into another argument over money while he was driving. Her neck was snapped on impact, and she died instantly. She was clearly, clearly the inspiration for Rarity. Damn. Then there was Alexandra Matthews. Alex was a competitive girl. She always sought to be the best at the best, especially at sports, track in particular. Her father always wanted a boy, and since her mother was declared incapable of having another child, he decided to raise her as if she was his son. In the end, she loved her mother and father, and was more than happy to play sports with her father. She excelled at them, even. This made her popular, and by the time she was in high school, was being sought by, out by athletic scouts from colleges all over the country. This made her try even harder. She had always wanted to compete in the Olympics. However, when she was 15, her mother, who had been told she could not have another child, had a son. After that, her parents didn't pay very much attention to her, which made her more determined to succeed. She ended up pushing herself so hard at track, she neglected her friends, her grades, and even her personal health. At one point, she became so desperate, she started taking steroids. What her and her family didn't know was that she had a minor heart condition that the steroids worsened. Since she was pushing herself so physically hard as well, she ended up co collapsing during a match due to a heart complication. She died in the hospital a few days later. In the show, Rainbow Dash seems the most similar. Mm. Girl, the girl most similar to Applejack, Jamie Sanders, was a farm girl, just like, just like the character based off her. What the show didn't include was that her farm was run down, and her family was always struggling with money. She oftentimes worked odd jobs under the table to try and help support the family. She had many brothers and sisters, and she was the second, which meant it was up to her and her brother to take care of the youngins. This meant she didn't have enough time to hang out with friends or take any extracurricular activities, or even do her homework on most nights. She had an aunt, whom her family from, Maine, from Manhattan was based off, who kept offering her to send money to support her and her mother, but they were proud and almost refused. That is until her father died from a heart attack in 1987. Her mother followed shortly after, having, her, having killed herself when she couldn't handle the pressure of taking care of all of the children. They were taken in by their senile grandma, who was incapable of truly taking care of them. Jamie, herself, oftentimes helped out with other families' yard work to help keep the family afloat. She died when she fell into a wood chipper. Ooh. I know. Pinkie Pie's inspiration is probably the saddest story. Katherine Jackson was a foster child and moved from home to home. Her birth father killed her mother and himself in a fit, in a fit of rage when she was five and she could never quite settle into a good home. Some of the foster families would take her and merely interested in the, financial, in the financial support adopting a child would bring, and would refuse to feed or clothe her. Even when she was in a nice home with a good family, the old memories still haunt her, breaking her fragile sanity into a million pieces. She would have nightmares of her mother screaming and bleeding, and her father screaming for her, claiming to be after her next. By the time she was in high school, she completely snapped. She started to hallucinate and act out in class. Many of the other kids and even teachers assumed she was merely hyperactive and was trying to be funny. She would oftentimes paint and draw and write about fantastical things and dress in over-the-top clothing. All, all the while, her condition was getting worse and worse, the voices and images becoming more realistic and more demanding. She died when she jumped off a building, one of the voices having told her she could fly. What makes that last fact even more chilling is that Lauren originally designed Pinkie Pie to be a Pegasus, as seen in her early development sketches. And now for the last pony, I guess. The last. Twilight Sparkle's inspiration was an A student by the name of Cynthia Little. She was held up to a high standard from a young age. Her older brother was always getting awards for academic and athletic achievement, and she was held to the same high standard. She ended up neglecting other facets of her life in order to make sure she got the best grades. For a while, this worked. Her parents were proud of her accomplishments and bragged to their friends about not having just not one genius child, but two. That is, until a local private academy for the gifted started to become interested to her, among several other advanced students. She knew that this would be the best opportunity she could have to prove herself as the perfect child. But the pressure was high. 
She knew that there were limited spots for new students, and she knew that there would be a test and an essay required to get in. So she became a little desperate. She studied to the point where she could hardly eat, never sleep. As the test closed in, she panicked, and she opted to find an essay online to copy, and during the test resorted to cheating. Once she was caught, her parents were horrified. She sank into a deep depression, and eventually hung herself to save herself the shame of being an imperfect daughter. You might, you might be wondering now why Lauren Foss would be inspired to make a sweet children's show inspired by such depressing events. Perhaps she felt some odd need to get the girls closure, or perhaps to tell their stories in any way she could. Think about it. In one episode, the Cutie Mark Chronicles, each party describes of how they each earned one's cutie marks. Rainbow Dash, who was able to make a sonic rainbow on the same day for all the girls to see and to make them be able to earn their cutie marks, clearly makes you tend to wonder about each girl's death in real life on the game on the same day. And in the show, Flutterfly is able to take care of animals she adores. Rarity is a, is a successful designer with loving parents. Rainbow Dash is, a, is in fact a great athlete. Applejack has a, a successful farm. Pinkie Pie is happy with not a care in the world. And Twilight Sparkle was accepted into an exclusive school. Maybe. Just maybe. She wanted to get the spirits of these girls what they always wanted. And I think they're happy. Really makes you think, doesn't it? I and know, it, right? It's kind of eerie, too. And not I'm only not... that, this comes in the weirdest time ever. Yeah. I mean, there will be a. I mean, we're going to be dealing with equestrian girls soon. And mm-hmm. The fact that it's taking place in a high school, and the original girls that were quote unquote based off uh, for the original characters were in high school. The coincidences are just. It's eerie. They're baffling. Eerie on top of that. I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't tell if I can take this at face value or not, but then again. <sighs> Dang. <laughs> well, I guess I can call this a night. Or a yeah. afternoon, I guess. Yeah. 